Hi, beautiful book lovers. I thought today let's do another discussion um, looking at booktube video formats, how we review and discuss books, what are the pros and the cons. So if that sounds of interest, do stick around. Um, if you're new, my name is Katya Weinart. So we're looking at the preferences and opinions of fellow book lovers. Let's start then with the results of my poll last month, uh, the one that I did on my community tab in June. It revealed fascinating insights into the favorite video format of BookTube viewers. Among the respondents, there was a three-way tie for second place with 19% enjoying single book reviews, 19% preferring vlogs, and again, 19% looking for recommendations, leaving a significant majority who favor multiple book reviews. 42%. So these results really set the stage for our exploration of each format. Uh, first up, let's look at single book reviews, which are by far my favorite reviews to watch, but obviously not the majorities. They are certainly not um, number one. So pros, concentrating on just one book allows for a focused and in-depth analysis. These reviews act as a magnifying glass, allowing viewers to make informed decisions about whether to read a book. Now, if the review is split into a non-spoiler and spoiler section, I often return to re watch that review again and the spoiler section in particular after I've read the book myself. So for me, these reviews offer the perspective of the booktuber on themes, characters, world and plot and might be different from my own perspective. So I really value that. Now, after reading a book, it's easy to find the single dedicated book review again and rewatch it. This becomes trickier when the book I read was reviewed as part of a group and a simple search doesn't bring it to the top of the results. So a definite pro for me is actually finding the review again in the future. Now, although initial views on a single book review may be lower than grouped videos or grouped books in a video, I've noticed that a year later, the single book review format has been viewed more than twice as much as the grouped ones. And I think that could be down to the search function that I mentioned earlier. People actively searching for specific books find a single book review um, compared to when it's lumped in with several. And this is purely from my perspective. So I am really interested to hear from other booktubers as well as uh, people who just love booktube and don't necessarily have a channel. But for me, um, I'll go back to two years. So two years ago, I did a single book review for Till and that has about 700 views. Whereas a grouped um, review video of several books about two years ago is stuck at about 200. So that's maybe more than three times uh, the views. My numbers are really low. I don't get um, the reach that a lot of other booktubers get. So I'm sure that your numbers could look vastly different. But for me, that's quite significant to say, okay, so I've done 10 books in this review and um, they're from roughly the same time ago. And this one where I didn't have to read as many books and I got to wax lyrical about it because I loved it so much. That one actually got more views in the end. So that to me um, is really a consideration. Now let's go into the cons of this because otherwise I will wax lyrical again about why I like single book reviews and you don't necessarily love those. So cons. They don't provide diverse book recommendations for people who prefer the multiple options in one hit. In the same way that our attention is really caught by reels and shorts, a variety of books in one video could capture our attention for longer, like scrolling through options. For the booktuber, producing this type of video, the single book review one, can be time consuming as more time is spent discussing several aspects of a single book. It requires the kind of reviewing and deep dive that shorter reviews can skip. So then let's get into where the shorter reviews can be found. The multiple book reviews, which is by far the favorite of people who responded to my poll. And handy when I've been on a book reading binge uh, because I can't, you know, do single reviews for every single book I've read. So it is handy in that way. Pros, 
provides a variety of book recommendations in a single video, which can be helpful for viewers looking to discover new books and maybe even new genres. Because number two, it covers a broader range of genres and topics in the single video. Number three, it can be easier and more efficient to produce for the booktuber. If I'm time limited, it's easier for me to come up with two minutes worth of thoughts per book for five books than it is for me to think about 10 minutes worth of ideas for a single book review. Number four, sharing thoughts about multiple books can be satisfying after a good reading week. So grouping five books in one video is less stressful than sharing one long book review and trying to schedule one video for each of the remaining four. Number five, it's a great way to share your thoughts on book series that you've recently read and give your opinions on the series as a whole, including whether each book was consistently enjoyable. It's always interesting to see if readers agree on which book in the series is the weakest link as well. Cons needing to be mindful of consistency. Sometimes the mini reviews have less meaningful commentary for one book than another, and it is tempting to think it doesn't matter because the other books cover that gap. However, maintaining a consistent standard is important. Number two, multiple book review videos can make it harder for viewers to find, we talked about that, and rewatch a review of a specific book within your multi-book discussion. Now on my channel, as I said, multiple book reviews are viewed less frequently, even from the get go, and definitely in the long term. And it may be the opposite um, in your uh, channel. So yeah, I, I would love to know that. Wrap ups, they are, you know, just like multiple book reviews, pros and cons the same. They apply uh, here where you review or give an overview of all the books you've read in a specific time period, um, a month or after read-along or read-a-thon. Sometimes a wrap-up for a particular month can combine all the single book reviews that you did in that month or for an event. So now let's look at reading vlogs. These can be so much fun. I am enjoying Nathan's Nook where he takes us around South Korea while sharing his current reads and there's also a couple of his recent trip to LA, for example. So the pros provides an immersive experience for viewers as they see the book being read in real time. Shares a unique perspective on the reading experience. For example, I live in rural England and the number of cafes that I visited virtually through Nathan's book reviews is probably on par with the number of times I personally sat in a cafe while I've been living here. I haven't fact checked this. It may not be a true statement, but it feels true. Anyway, cons for reading vlogs. They may only appeal to viewers who enjoy being pulled into a booktuber's world and may not appeal to those solely looking to be drawn into the world of a book. They can be time consuming for the booktuber to produce, although the time factor becomes less of an issue with more experience in this filming style, I think, because I really haven't got the experience in this filming style, so I'm making that assumption. As a booktuber, it requires more focus than usual to balance providing immersion in the environment and still managing to share thoughts on the book. And then we get to TBRs, the list of books a reader has deemed to be on their to-be-read list. So this last grouping is more a book preview than a book review, since the booktuber will have yet to read the book. Have you seen... Um, Books and Lala, uh, her video where she picks booktuber recommendations and uh, she decides to read those books. But then it turns out as she's picked them, some booktubers that she's showing recommended books, but said, oh, but I haven't read it yet. I'm recommending it because of the reputation. I swear, TBRs can feel like such unnecessary pressure rather than just pure excitement. And we sort of like rush ahead now because we're like, oh no, everyone's talking about this book. I haven't had the time to read it, but I'm going to go ahead and recommend it. What if you then read it and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, guys, I'm so sorry I recommended this. The point is TBRs can feel like pressure and I now try not to exceed like 10 books on my TBR and I try to have them from my owned unread books. 
um, so that I don't feel like I have to rush ahead with something new. With TBRs, we can provide a confident overview of the book's synopsis that the publisher has just handed to us. And although I don't see it happening as much these days as about a decade ago, I came across, you know, um, a decade ago, like a few books with blurbs that said a cross between the Night Circus and Stardust. And then I'd read the book and it turned out to be nothing like those two books, let alone an imagined offspring of the two. So I don't know, maybe this is a conversation for another time. Are book blurbs actually more reliable these days than they used to be? Again, another digression. But anyway, I'm curious about that. Book blurbs are written to market the book and generate buzz. So they're not going to always be entirely accurate. You'd hope that they are, but they're not entirely objective. That's the word. This is the downside of a TBR because we have less information than we think. The focus is on what will be read in the future rather than what has been read. Ultimately, readers may like to approach book blurbs critically and research before deciding to buy or read a book unless it's from one of their trusted authors or publishers. So the real pros and cons. I already started going into the cons. The structure for the TBR one is not very good, is it? Anyway, so enjoying the buzz and generating discussion and anticipation for future book reviews. That's definitely a pro. Uh, con, the lack of first-hand knowledge about the book can lead to relying solely on book blurbs, which may not always accurately represent the book's contents. Um, readers may be better off approaching TBRs critically and researching before making decisions. The focus is shifted towards future potential reading rather than reflecting on books that have been read. So that's, yeah, that is it. As a viewer or fellow booktuber, I think it's essential for us to, you know, consider our personal preferences when it comes to the video formats we choose to put out. Each format has its pros and cons, and it might be specific to your channel as well. So offering distinct advantages and challenges. Single book reviews provide depth, multiple book reviews variety, reading vlogs immersion for viewers, TBRs generate anticipation. So those are my thoughts. Let me know whether you agree or disagree with these. Um, is there something I've missed? Probably. Uh, share your preferred video format and what you value in book reviews. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, thanks for joining me and take care. Bye.